Well, hello. So here we have a Thrustmaster Airbus Throttle Quadrant. And if you're like me, you have the thing and you are trying to get it set up in X-Plane and you want to get this thing set so that it is calibrated and it doesn't show the simulator throttles being up here or you have trouble getting it to go back in reverse into the simulator. So uh, we're going to get that set up here, and I'll show you how to do it. I have spent many, well, let's just say several hours and much time just, just getting this thing set up, and uh, I'll help you get it uh, set up for the uh, TOLUS A319-321, also the Flight Factor A320. So hopefully you won't have some of the same issues that I had. Okay, so here we are. We are in X-Plane 11. Right now I happen to have the uh, Tullus A319 loaded up. First thing you're going to want to do is set up the joystick itself the, using the, the controls up here. Come in. Uh, in this case, I just have the throttle quadrant and the side stick both here. One of the things that it does do is it assumes that you may possibly have uh, the side controllers, the optional parts, which are not available as of today. I don't have that. And also the uh, the toe brakes, uh, it sometimes shows up here. Uh, so you want to make sure that you get the right uh, the right uh, thing showing here. Here is the uh, the actual creature in question. We have the, the joystick that is known as the throttle quadrant. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you've got throttle 1 and throttle 2 set up here. Go ahead and go in and calibrate. Uh, you'll get this screen that pops up. Take your uh, throttle quadrant, use the, release the release levers, and go all the way back, full reverse, and all the way forward to full forward, and then you can go back to idle. That will give you some uh, calibration for those. These other... Uh, axes uh, you may not have, and if you don't, if you're like me, you don't have them uh, hooked up at the moment, uh, you go ahead and accept them and hit next. And then we're going to let X-Plane go ahead and read the settings, hit next, it takes a few seconds, it will read it, and then you are all set up. One of the things that I did as I was uh, taking a look at some of the joystick settings and the in windows, and it really does not help. Just to show you what I'm talking about here, uh, looking at windows, you come in here to the actual uh, driver for the throttle quadrant and if you do uh, actually look at the what they uh, call game controller settings, then you bring the the throttle quadrant in, mine's set to engine 1 and 2, properties, if you've installed the, the uh, software for uh, the throttle quadrant, it's going to give you this nice little pop-up box. There's really not much use for it. One of the things I did find was that the thrust levers, if you look at the move the right one, number two, it seems to go at least somewhat uh, in a, uh, it's got a little bit of movement, whereas the, the left one, is it's either all green it's either on or it's off. See that there. Uh, but it was a cause for concern at first, but it turns out it's really unwarranted. This is just about a worthless screen, except that it does show you things like uh, your uh, switches and so forth. They are actually operating. Other than that, there's almost no use for that. Do not be concerned about the throttle x-axis or y-axis if it shows you um, what looks like a uh, non-linear operation. Okay, so we're here in X-Plane, and first thing you want to do is want to make sure that you've got your throttle, so, throttle 1 set up for throttle 1 in the sim, throttle 2 set up for throttle 2 in the sim. You've probably gotten that already. Then there is a response curve that is uh, optional, except not in this case, it's pretty much mandatory. If you've ever used a response curve, you click on it, and one thing is very important is check this box down here. It says has beta slash reverse detents. Okay, just to review, 
the bottom axis of this graph is the position of your controller. So as you uh, move it, that this x-axis is where your controller is. If I go into reverse, it comes all the way back to zero. If I bring it forward, it hits the detent, and it stops right there. So what we're really reading is right down where the mouse is down here on this part here between 0.2 and 0.3. It actually is showing that it's 0.26. It's giving an actual output of 0.25, which you can read over here on the y-axis, 0.25. Very important to have that set up. You won't get that unless you have this box checked. Okay, let's get the terminology right here. So first of all, if you look, you'll notice that, uh, okay, here's your reverse range on the controller. This is what we would refer to in the sim as being either reverse or they also make allowances for referring to the beta range, which is a turboprop term when you pull the thrust lever back. Think beta uh, as in backup, uh, reverse, and think of this as being up here as ahead alpha range. So alpha and beta range. You got the two different ranges and you want to make sure that the thrust lever is in the appropriate range at the right time. Alright, so looking at the thrust levers, what you want to do is remember that you've got an idle detent right down here. So that's where you want to keep it. We're going to figure out what that is in terms of a joystick value. Uh, we know that, we'll assume that that's zero. It may, it's going to be at least close to zero. And then you've got the other settings for toga, Max continuous or flex, and then you've got the climb setting. We're going to find out where those are soon enough. But right now, that's this is the crossover between the alpha range and beta slash reverse. Remember, beta is a turboprop term, but it, for our purposes, that works just fine. So this range here, we want to make sure that right now we are at what is essentially a crossover between the the alpha range and the beta range, but we really want to be at the very bottom most part of the alpha range. So what this means is when we come into our throttle response, we're going to edit our response curve knowing that throttle 1 is right here. It should be at the very bottom most part of the uh, alpha range. And as I look at it, see it, it it's where it looks up here, it says alpha. If I bring it back far enough, it says beta. Uh, could be a potential problem. Let's just bring this thing back so it says alpha range here. So now as we move up, we're going through the alpha range and it naturally wants to just settle right there. I'll click apply. Let's bring it back open one more time. Notice that when I bring the, thru the thrust lever back into reverse, we go into this reverse range here. I want to make sure that this little slider uh, I've actually got mine a little bit back to uh, help ensure that I'm not uh, that I'm that I'm actually still in the alpha range. So I'll keep this back here. I'm at so right now my thrust lever is at the bottom most part of the um, alpha range, and pulling it back into reverse goes back down there. Once again, you must have this checkbox checked and you've got these points that it kind of self-generates. If you lose them, they will regenerate once you uh, generate a new res response curve and you check this box. So these, these points that are here at a minimum have to be here. It does not matter if it says cap mole rom, it can go linear, it really doesn't matter. Uh, cubic, I think that greatly skews the curve. Let's just leave it at this. Um, and that's fine. So we apply that. We do the same thing for throttle 2. We make sure it is uh, staying at the bottom of the alpha range right here and we see that it works bringing it back down into beta there. Alright, we hit apply. Now the next thing we're going to do is come up to plugins. Again, this applies to the tallest aircraft open ISCS screen and come over here to joystick settings. F1, F2, Katago reversers, it really doesn't matter what uh, I have that set to off. Reverse on same axis, that's what we need right here. And we have that set to 1. Idle location, 
notice it says 0.25. That corresponds very nicely. Notice we're at 0.26 on the alpha curve here. So what that means is then that anything less than 0.25, it's going to pull the thrust lever back into reverse. Okay, now we have a couple other detents, if you'll notice. We have the climb detent location and the MCT, max continuous thrust uh, detent location. Notice too that this program is nice enough to actually give you the raw value of where the thrust lever is at this time. If I bring it back all the way back, it does show zero. If I bring it all the way forward, it does go all the way up to 1.0 that's kind of handy to have for reading the positions. Notice it's a whole lot better than what Windows was coming up with. So with my thrust lever we are, we've kind of determined experimentally that 0.25 is 0.26 is where the thrust lever just reaches the, the minimum position on the alpha range so we put our idle detent at 0.25. If we move our thrust lever up until it hits that first click, that first click is the uh, climb power setting. What the raw value throttle 1 is showing is 0 0.501. So I set the detent pretty close to that. It's right at 0.5. You really don't have anything more than to the nearest hundredth. So 0 0.50 is close enough and that works rather well. As I move it up to the flex or uh, max continuous detent now we see that the throttle value is at 0 0.751, 0 0.75, call it something in that neighborhood. I have set the MCT detent location to 0.74. So it will, the, the program will see this throttle position and it will set the thrust on the sim accordingly. And of course, you may be wondering why don't we have one for the top, but that's because that's always 1.0, so it doesn't need one. So we can save these settings and they're in there. Note that these settings for the detents are for both throttles whereas we had calibration for the throttles individually. Now at this time I don't uh, I don't have these engines running so I can I can actually push these up and it won't do anything. Okay now we're in the Tolis A321 uh, Again, we'll go into the uh, joystick configuration settings, draw your attention down here, and I will just show you that I have one profile set up for both of the TOLUS Airbus aircraft, and I have a different one set up for the Flight Factor A320 and the uh, JAR JAR Designs A330. So we have a slightly different calibration for all of those just because, not so much because of the calibration of the thrust levers, but because they tend to use different commands for the lower uh, switches that are here for the uh, engine mode selector and the engine master switches. Also, Tallis has the same, I believe it's the same, uh, screen here. It has the raw values as indicated. So all the tallest aircraft are going to be set up in the same fashion. Okay, now I'm in the Flight Factor Airbus 320. They do things a little bit differently. We'll put some power on the aircraft here. I'll set up my uh, external power. I have that available. Let's power up the airplane and we come in here and I'll demonstrate how this works. Now, on the plug-ins, we don't have the same uh, situation as what Tallis uses. Uh, Flight Factor has decided to do things just a little bit differently. They come into settings and there is here this uh, axis, axis input. It says axis curve support. Your other choice was native input, a little different. Axis curve support seems a little bit uh, mysterious that they would use that term but that's what it is and it works. That gives you uh, forward and reverse on one uh, thrust lever. Okay to do that we're gonna calibrate this 
And again, we have a slightly different profile. So I have Airbus, uh, the uh, Flight Factor A320 as its own profile. The response curve is very much the same, uh, but not quite the same. You'll get the beta and the the, the alpha range set that uh, tr transition and that crossover point the same way. However, what you will find is a need for a couple of, ex of additional points up here. If uh, you were to use uh, really doesn't matter whether it's linear or the uh, this cat mole run either way uh, we need a couple of points up here here's let me go ahead and take this point out I'm going to delete that one and I'm going to take this point here and delete that one and apply it the idle detent, detent that worked out fine the crossover worked out fine now I'm gonna go up to the first detent there it is. Notice it's not far enough. The actual detent needs to be up here. I've, but my thrust lever on my physical quadrant is kind of floating around somewhere up here. So if I move it into the detent, it needs to go up higher. So in order to get it to move up this additional distance, I'm going to go back into my settings on number two and we're gonna put in a point well we have to go plus and we're gonna put in a point and we're gonna move it up a little bit we come down here hit OK jiggle it a little bit I see it's moved up a little bit let's come down here we'll thrust over two let's move it up a little bit more apply say done and move it a little bit as moved a little closer so we get this thing and we keep just experimentally figuring out what we have to do to get this there my climb detent is both physically and actually in the uh, uh, they're matching up now if I move the, the thrust lever up to the second detent uh, that's a little too far so I need to adjust this thing and bring it down a little bit I had moved this point up just a little bit too far up here. Let's go with a point five one point seven one. That seems to match a, as a good place to have the the climb power setting. And then up here, I've got uh, this point here point seven six point eight six. That's a good place for the toga MCT setting. And if you look here, there's full forward toga, back to flex MCT, back here to climb, and all the way back. Okay, now we're in the JAR Designs Airbus 330. This is going to have a little bit of a different setup. They've thoughtfully designed it and integrated it, but that kind of assumes you are following what their thoughts were. First thing, open up their FMS menu, come over to McDo menu, go into settings, go to the next page, second page there, and where it says TCA quadrant, line select left number two, make sure that is on and green. You can then close that. Then come up to the joystick settings. We have our own profile for this controller. And I have that set up there. We're going to go into the response curve. We can set this up. You can tweak it a little bit with a, a point in there, and that will give you a slightly different operation. The point that's up there was needed. You can see that works. Reverse works a little differently as you activate the reverse unlock levers and move it back this throttle in the in the Airbus 330 uses these levers here as I'm moving my physical throttle quadrant forward I go into my forward position the alpha range and it un it unlatches those virtual thrust levers 
reverse levers, and they go back down. So it is functionally the same. Uh, I did have to put that point in to calibrate to get the max continuous to work right. One other thing is getting these uh, these switches for the engine start lever and the master switches, getting them set correctly in order to make them actually flip properly again you have to go in and make some settings jar designs did something a little bit unusual they wanted us to go into the switch number five setting here and if you look at the line here engine one on tca master switch on so come in i'll show you come down here jd jar designs come down to tca master switch one on apply and you will then have it hit done and amazingly they must have some script or something there but when you do that starting engine one all these other things seem starting to work engine two they work just fine it runs whatever scripts are required and it works it's pretty easy to set up we are now in the flight factor a320 one of the things you'll find is that the engine uh, switch number five the engine one on left engine master that is actually uh, set to the same thing as switch 11 which is engine one off left engine master this one number five says engine on left engine master so what it is in effect doing is it is toggling if you start the aircraft with the engines running and your physical switches are up then when you go to move them to the off position your virtual switches will move in the opposite direction so it is apparently important to make sure you got these things set so that your actual switches match what you're going to be starting with when you uh, when you boot up the uh, the aircraft the other switch to be setting here is the engine mode selector switch so what we found is I it came into one dash sim come down to your two uh, some of these underneath uh, we open up minus com I guess because it's close to the com uh, panel FF for flight factor engine start switch to crank and it will set uh, button number nine set uh, use this uh, normal for button 13 and use this line engine start switch to start for button 10 you'll apply those and then your switch should should then synchronize properly with the uh, with the simulator okay now I'm taking a look at the tallest a319 we're gonna make sure that we've got our switches down down here on the engine panel set up properly just to show you what those are engine master is switch one engine master is set to on number two is set master set to on for switch 11 and 12 they are down here engine master one and two both off you do want to uh, go ahead and test this thing out I'm going to show you how we do a manual start on the Airbus engines. It's a, something you can do on the Tolis, you can do it on the Flight Factor. Uh, you are not able to use these manual start switches on the Jar Designs 330. Make sure your APU air bleed is on. We've got the beacon turned on. Make sure your doors are closed. For some reason, I'm not showing slides armed for the L1 and L2 or the R1 and R2 doors, but something sort of a glitch with the sim at any rate got the beacon turned on we've got pneumatic pressure we'll come down here I'm going to use the thrustmaster quadrant we'll move that to the start position we see that the indication on our engine display looks proper and correct but this could be a manual start so I'll go up here I will start the left engine we'll open the guarded cover going to press up here and do a manual start. That's going to start the airflow 
pneumatics going in, turning the engine. We're going to see N2 is spooling up. We wait for a max motoring RPM, which is going to be somewhere in the mid 20s. Just need to get enough airflow through that engine. Come down here again. I'm using the the actual uh, thrust master. Let's move the master switch to on. N2 is increasing, EGT is rising. Come up here, disengage the starter, close the cover. Engine available, we have a good start on that engine. Many of you are more used to the automatic start, where we just reach down and flip the switch, which does much the same. Manual start is used for cold temperatures uh, when it's necessary to motor the engine to make sure it's all clear before introducing fuel. You can see here that the engine is in fact starting. Fuel flow is initiated. EGT is lighting off and rising. So I'd say the Thrustmaster is working rather well. Okay, we get the avail symbol up on the N1. Do our after start flows. Make sure that mode selector is off. We'll come up above. APU is uh, not going to be needing the bleed anymore. The cross bleed switch is in auto. You can even turn off the APU. Read our after start checklist and we'd be done.